Good afternoon and welcome to uh, Questback's latest webinar um, on uh, leadership leading in uncertain times with uh, me, Luke Talbot, and my colleague Kate Pritchard. Hello, Kate. Hello. And uh, what we did say, actually, thank you all for joining us uh, on this, what is a rainy afternoon in the UK. I hope you have better weather where you are, but we did say we we're going to show, show our webcams just to show our working from home setup. Um, these are definitely uncertain times. I don't know whether a cat's going to run behind me at any point or a child is going to run and get something from the printer for their schoolwork. And uh, Kate, I think you have a similar setup at home, right? Completely, yes. It's always uh, a little bit of an anxious time when I have a meeting. They don't, they don't seem to realise that webcams exist, so yeah. It, exactly, uh. exactly. <laughs> so um, we're all having a lot of fun with Microsoft Teams uh, backgrounds at the moment, and I know people are using Zoom, you have a similar thing. Um, what we wanted to do, we did a similar thing in our last webinar a few weeks ago. Um, we asked everyone in these uncertain times uh, where you're joining us from. And so what we'd like to know right now, so we're going to just launch the poll to you all and find out where you're all joining us from. And um, the answer options are uh, from my bedroom at home, from my kitchen, from my living room or sofa, my home office or my employer's premise. So hopefully uh, you can all see this uh, survey. And Kate, as usual, I'm going to ask you quickly what you think uh, the answer is going to come back as. So what do you think? Hmm. OK. I imagine it's just after lunch that quite a lot will be joining from the living room and sofa, but probably yeah. the most from a home office. Yeah, I um, I wonder this too, and uh, it's slightly cheating because I can actually see the results as they come in. So, but if if I were to if I were to guess beforehand, I would think that maybe people are a little bit more um, uh, set up now. So they are, yeah. um, you know, they've had a few weeks to get into this, and they have a bit more of an environment that they're used to. Um, and so hopefully, no, you know, fewer people are joining from just you know sitting on their bed. If you are joining from sitting on your bed, then that's great. If if we if I do bore you too much, then you can just doze off. That's fantastic. <laughs> um, but if you do have a great home office set up, that's fantastic as well. Uh, I'm just going to uh, close the poll now, um, and we'll uh, see what the answers are. Uh, I'm going to share that with everybody so you can see. Oh. And as predicted, so uh, is most of people joining from the living room, the sofa. Still, actually, quite a lot of people joining from um, uh, from you know the uh, bedroom at home, um, which is mm -hmm. uh, you know just go, just goes to show how disruptive these times are. Right, we have to make do with what we have, and um, and so maybe the the content of this webinar is all the more pertinent uh, because of that. So um, I'm going to not share my webcam for the rest of this. I know I know Kate will probably hide hers too. Not that just yeah. clears up some space on my screen, and we can carry on. Uh, in terms of a little bit of uh, housekeeping for everybody, we, Kate and I are just massively open to questions. Anytime, just ask a question, we'll try and deal with them. We've got 30 minutes for this webinar. We might um, have to creep over 30 minutes if we run out of time, if people keep asking questions. Um, otherwise, we're going to try and stick to it for you um, to free up the rest of your afternoon. The recording will be available afterwards, as always. If you do want to ask a question, uh, then simply uh, go into the um, to the questions or the comments part and actually just type it in. Uh, I'll get an alert and I'll be able to do that. Uh, there is an option in GoToMeeting to raise your hand. We don't really use that in our webinars, so just type in questions. It's uh, the better way of doing it. So without further ado, um, let's go on to the uh, content of today's webinar. Um, Today we're, we are talking about leading in uncertain times, managing in uncertain times, um, trying to you know, make the most of, of the situation in which we are to, to carry on and, and, um, and, and function as best as possible as organisations. Um, and uh, the four topics that we're going to cover are the changing world of work. You know, what are the themes that we had leading into this crisis and what, you know, how, is that, how have those been impacted by this? So how has that changed even more? Uh, we're going to talk about the important um, trends and, and the important sort of themes or dimensions of leadership in times of crisis. And there are some really key um, key dimensions that uh, Kate will cover. Um, the importance of feedback and actually what Questback brings to this for our clients and for our customers. Um, so that's where I will uh, take over and show a bit of our technology and um, show you what you can access today for free. And what we're also doing today is we're actually launching something brand new it's completely free during COVID-19, 
pandemic. So um, and it's brand new today, just launching, and you can uh, you'll be the first people to see it in the whole world. Um, so that'll be awesome, and we hope that it's useful for you as well. Um, and finally, we, we'll, we'll say a few words on you know how how this can help to build trust and empowerment. But we want to keep this as interactive as possible, so we do have a second poll for you today. So we don't just want to know where you're joining us from. Uh, we'd also love to know a little bit about how you're feeling about your ability um, to lead at this time. And you have three options uh, in this uh, in this quick poll. You have a very confident OK and I could do with some help. Um, so there you go. Uh, on your marks, get set, go. Uh, it's um, <laughs> always nice to get these easy, quick statistics. And uh, Kate, I'm going to do my usual trick. Where do you think we stand? I'm expecting a mixed bag, uh, but I imagine there are definitely some people on the call that could do with some help, which is why we're here. Yeah, I would I, I, I would say that's probably the case. I don't know how many people are going to say they're very confident. Then, you know, I mean, a lot of organisations are dealing with this very, very well. And I've been incredibly impressed with some of the conversations I've been having over the last few weeks. Um, and uh, and yeah, that, that's fantastic to see. But I think most people are probably going to be around the middle. And I've just taken a sneak peek at the results, and uh, I know we're kind of a, we're kind of spot on there. I'm going to close the poll in the interest of time. We've had um, about two thirds of the people have responded, which is great. Uh, so I'm going to close that and show the results. And it's a it's a runaway um, score there for OK going in the middle. Which uh, you were right, Kate. Encouraging. Hmm. Exactly. So OK is um, is great. Let's let's see if uh, by the end of this we can help give you some tools and um, pointers that push it towards um, you know very confident. So uh, first, a little bit about uh, Questback before we move into uh, into more of this. Um, Questback is a company that delivers or um, designs and uh, creates uh, experience management software um, that helps customers to um, to measure employee experience across all points in the employee journey. Um, from you know the, your your large scale traditional employee engagement surveys to more frequent weekly pulses and um, also um, uh, process driven um, surveys that go across the employee journey as well and customer experience and market research. One of our main uh, main aims, our main goals, um, is to is to actually democratize feedback. So we really believe that. Um, Feedback can help everybody in large and small organisations to make better decisions by connecting them to everybody and what they think and what, how they feel, and also to lots of operational data at the same time, so they can actually see um, uh, see things that they can they can do better, things that they can improve, and understand um, how. And so everything that we do is geared towards building tools that um, can be used by everyone in an organisation, not just um, your HR department, not just uh, your senior analysts. Um, but also uh, team leaders and uh, even everyday people who just work for the company. So you'll see a lot of that in what we're about to present. Um, but enough about us. Um, let's talk a little bit about leading in times of change. Kate, over to you. Excellent, thank you. So yeah, we just wanted to start by touching on the changing world of work. And there's been talk for a long time about how the world of work has been changing. So last year, the CIPD um, presented and they spoke about the sources of change being in four different buckets. So there was a lot of talk about technological change, social and demographic change, globalisation and economic uncertainty. So we're all aware of how technology is shaping everything that we're doing, both at work and outside work, um, and how the challenges of having different generations in the workforce together, particularly particularly how the younger generations have an expectation that their work should have a greater meaning and a desire to work for a more purposeful organisation. These were amongst the things we were talking about in terms of the changing world of work a year ago. There was also a lot of talk about Brexit, remember that? We held a webinar about this time last year and we were speaking at that about organisations become less, less hierarchical. If you go to the next slide, Luke, uh, we can see that. So we were talking really about a greater focus on teams and about collaboration across organisations. We also spoke about how career progression had really changed. It now involves a range of experiences working in different areas, usually for many different employers, rather than, than that li linear progression that they used to be. So there were all sorts of changes happening, but when COVID-19 happened, 
everything changed. So with COVID-19, uh, digitalization was obviously accelerated massively. There's an increased need now for teamwork and collaboration because overnight, most of the workforce has become remote and very flexible. So the next slide just shows uh, some of the issues that have now become really important to organisations. There's a lot more talk about team working, about people having to collaborate because we're working in this different time. Um, I guess the pace of change has been so huge. Some of the things that we were really anxious about uh, previously, things such as remote and flexible working that a lot of organisations were really grappling with, have now arrived overnight and they look set to stay. I think even when we are allowed to work together, a lot of people will have preference for home working as a way of helping to improve their work-life balance. And perhaps some employers will decide that they no longer need their office premises. But this crisis has also brought to the fore other really important issues. So things such as trust, employee well-being, and social responsibility. There's now more talk about organisational purpose and about companies doing the right thing. So there's no doubt that the world of work is changing rapidly at the moment, and the future of work will look very different. But we're not there yet, and what we really want to spend today focusing on is the challenge that business leaders have during this pandemic. It's really testing leaders in ways that they never imagined. And to survive in these times, we really need our leaders to be at the best. We know that excellent leadership can make the, the difference between business success and business failure, between employee motivation and disengagement. We've probably all seen examples of fantastic leaders who make good early decisions, who communicate frequently, they adjust rapidly to virtual leadership, and they've been adopting a really compassionate approach. And at Questback, we talk about the four C's of effective leadership during a crisis. So these four C's are compassion, courage, consistency and excellent communication. Uh, communicators who encourage collaboration within that. So I'd just like to look at each of these in turn. So firstly, compassion. And this is really about the ability to relate to employees and to really demonstrate that as leaders, we care about employees, that we care about the people and the company, not just uh, the leaders caring about themselves. Great leaders put their people first um, and they think of them as, as actual human beings uh, before workers for them. They're supportive of the situation employees are in, they focus on their well-being and show appreciation for their efforts. And we know that when employees feel that their leaders are deeply invested in who they are, they're then willing to, to do their best work and the organisation will then thrive. The next is around communication and collaboration. We know that leaders need to be excellent communicators, but they also need to encourage collaboration between employees. It's important that communication lines are continually open so that employees are clear on the business priorities. They know what they should be focusing on and they have the opportunity to get involved and have their say. We need open, honest, clear and timely communication to build trust. Employees need to believe that their organisation can handle the crisis and that comes from strong communication. But as well as communicating these key messages really uh, regularly, it's also important to listen to employees, to ask for feedback and address the questions that they have. Collaboration is so important and if there's an environment where everyone feels that they can get involved by sharing their ideas and offering creative solutions, then the organisation is more likely to succeed. Thirdly, we have courage, and it's so important that leaders have the courage to act decisively and to make difficult decisions quickly. We've seen that in many organisations, hard decisions have had to be made. Things like reducing or remodelling the workforce, looking at how people are paid to match business needs and liquidity demands. We've seen that agile problem solving has come to the fore. Lengthy decisions are now actioned in hours. It's important that leaders are brave enough to try new things, that they're, they're thinking innovative, innovatively and encouraging their workforce um, to, to think creatively also. It's so important to be decisive. Leaders can't please everybody, but they need to motivate people around their vision of the right thing to do to provide that clarity. And finally, there needs to be consistency. So to, to trust leaders, it's really important that they can see consistent positive behaviours from their leaders. And people believe that the, what the leaders say is matched by what they do. People really have to see that consistency and to see that people are living by the organisational values and acting with integrity, even in these really challenging circumstances. 
we know that when leaders are seen as people who keep their word and who can be trusted, then employees will be uh, motivated to give their best. So these four C's in our minds are really important. And obviously this is a really challenging time for people. There's no rule book about how to lead during a pandemic. So people are having to learn as they go. There's no amount of training that will have prepared anybody for these circumstances. And we feel that given that, getting feedback during this time is, is more important than ever. So what we're really encouraging is that um, feedback during this time is prioritized. And there's various ways of doing this. It can be done very informally, but there's benefit in our mind of actually using more formal methods as well to collect real evidence so that leaders can really understand how they're doing and what they need to do to improve their leadership style. Remember that as a leader, it's not just about what you achieve, it's also about how you achieve it. And we've got some feedback tools that um, we'd like to talk to you about that can really help leaders to thrive within organisations. So Luke, I'll hand over to you to, to do that. Thanks, Kate. And also, uh, Kate, well done for coping with me going to the wrong slides several times. <laughs> so talking about leading in uncertain times and uh, doing webinars in different locations, I'm, uh, I'm clicking on things and uh, sometimes going to the wrong slide. So thank you for that. Um, so, um, yeah, so what we wanted to do today is just show you um, uh, two tools that we have, um, have, have launched as part of uh, our um, sort of uh, COVID-19 range of, of, of tools that can help you to lead in uncertain times. And the first one um, is, uh, is QB. Now QB is, um, is, is something that we've uh, packaged up about five, six weeks ago and, and delivered, to, so delivered for free during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and it has quite a lot of content built in uh, that can help you to, uh, to, to, I guess, navigate this situation. Um, we've had really a really good, strong response actually to the uh, QB initiative um, and to all of the content that we put on there. We've been putting more content in each week. Uh, there are over 550 companies now signed up to this um, and uh, a lot of these companies are now looking to how they can roll this out to their entire organization to try to, uh, one, just get more information, but also maybe um, look at this as an opportunity to do things slightly differently. So I've actually spoken to, uh, to a lot of companies that have said that, you know, this is, this is something they're looking at as an opportunity to, uh, to maybe, you know, their employees are looking at them and asking them, you know, what are you going to do differently? And, how are we going to act differently as a company as we come out of this? Uh, so one of the uh, one, the thing that we want to launch today, uh, QB is there already, and some of you are already signed up to it, um, and some of you aren't. So you can go in anytime you want to actually uh, actually register and start using it. Uh, today we launched this leading in uncertain times um, uh, content pack uh, experience app, and uh, this uh, is basically exactly what um, Kate was just talking about. It is a very simple poll that you can send out to uh, your entire organization um, and, and find out you know, if your leaders are doing a good job, if they're communicating your vision clearly, if they're visible enough, if they're trusted. Um, it uh, has questions in it from um, the four Cs that, um, that we've just mentioned, so communication, compassion, consistency and courage, as well as uh, an open-ended question uh, to get ideas for how things could be better. Um, and it's very, very simple to launch this um, inside your organization. Um, you simply go into QB, hit start, choose the group of people uh, that you actually want to send this to, choose your entire, uh, your entire organization or your team. You can even upload a group of people uh, very simply here. I won't go through that because we have um, other uh, demo recordings where we, can, uh, where we show how this works. Um, and I'm about to show a, another one for uh, Leadership 360. But what this will do is it will give you a very, very simple um, a check of uh, your organization and how well you are doing um, in those four dimensions. Uh, what you can see here um, is uh, the results for this. So this is just a, um, a sample that I did earlier and you can very, very quickly from this identify um, where, which areas you're not doing very well in that you need to focus more on. Uh, you can see the areas that you're doing really, really well in um, and you can also uh, dive into a bit of a heat map here and see, well, you know, is this different for people who work remotely, people who temporarily work remotely or regularly work remotely? Is it different based on location? Um, all of these sorts of things, um, as well as open text comments at the end. Now, this is available right now. Um, you can actually, uh, like I said, access it straight away. 
what this will give you is a good sense of how well, um, you know, just generally the organization is feeling about leadership, about courage, consistency, communication, compassion um, in, in your leadership. Um, and uh, what we expect uh, that will happen is that this will uh, lead uh, many people to, um, to say, well, okay, we need to dive deeper into these topics. So this is great because it tells me that I have a gap here, but how do we improve that? What are the important um, next steps that we need to take? And also, um, are these you know, gaps that we've identified, are they genuine gaps? Are they ones that we really need to pay attention to? Um, so we need to go in and do a bit more of uh, an in-depth study on this. So we have, uh, as part of this as well, access to a Leadership 360 tool, um, which uh, we launched earlier this year. And I'll go into that now and show how that can take you all the way through that leadership development journey so that you can um, be the best leader you can be and also nurture the best leaders inside your organization uh, during these times. Um, this is the uh, Leadership um, 360 tool. It's very, very easy for users to, 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 to access. So we would expect um, that as with um, many of our customers who are already using this, uh, this would be uh, distributed throughout the organization as a, as a self-service tool. So uh, managers, project managers, et cetera, can access this. Um, and they can uh, just basically go in, read up a little bit about what this is. I've already had a question actually in the comments saying, uh, asking where we got the questions from. So uh, in this uh, leadership model, we get them from a, a transformation and transformational uh, leadership model, which you can uh, download the content from here. And it shows all of the research, the academic research that goes into this. And this has already also been built from you know, the, the last 20 years of our experience with our customers and running Leadership 360s. Um, and uh, very similarly to the, uh, to the other guide, um, the other experience app that we launched today, um, you can see uh, all of the questions here. These dive a lot more deeply into the um, themes that um, Kate was mentioning there. Um, and the big difference here is that when you start to invite people, you're going to do a 360. And uh, here we're, um, I've got five um, rater groups or, um, or uh, uh, sort of um, groups of people who can assess me um, and uh, set up. We can have up to nine and uh, I'm going to choose uh, my boss. We can have this to automatically set your boss as well uh, based on your organizational hierarchy and organizational structure. Um, but in this case, what I actually find quite useful is that while Nicola is my boss, I also work very closely with Frank, who I definitely see as um, you know, one of the people that I, um, you know, that I see as a, a sort of a leader or a manager. And so I'm going to select Frank as well. This is already showing how this can uh, provide more uh, depth than a normal 360 that's just managed centrally. Uh, here I could choose uh, the team that I work with as my team. Uh, or I could actually uh, just start adding people. Maybe this is a project. Um, so I could say, you know what, I'm going to add uh, some of the people inside uh, my organization. So just type in their names and it will add them. If they're not already in the system, then I can add their emails and add external people, etc. So I'm going to um, add some usual suspects here uh, from my team and, uh, and we can add them in. So there we go. Um, and then going into peers, exactly the same. Let's add this whole team. I could add the whole company if I really wanted to. I can add external people. I can add um, people from outside um, this group too. And like I said earlier, we can have up to uh, nine different uh, rater groups. Some organizations um, like to have a different uh, structure to their 360s and it totally supports that. Um, and then uh, finally, you just add a personal message. Um, and uh, so, hey everyone. This, uh, no, not bank. This is a quick demo. Smiley face. There we go. And that will be in the email that they receive, inviting them to their 360. So I do quite a lot of these. And so to avoid annoying people too much, I let them know that this isn't one that you should pay too much attention to. Um, so this is going to go out to everybody. And now I'm in full control of the process. Um, this makes it very, very simple for organizations to run because not only can I see the process right now, I can see how many uh, invitations I've sent out, I can remind these groups. I can actually add people uh, to these groups um, after I've sent the survey. So I can say, oh my goodness, I, I can't believe uh, that I forgot to add uh, Radu in here. Uh, and, uh, you know, here we go. Yes, I want to add Radu. Um, and uh, also, how could I forget to add Kate? So here we go, I'll add Kate. 
and they'll receive emails as well. This very often happens. Um, I can assess myself. I can also um, uh, remind everybody. I can end the survey early if I have enough responses, et cetera, et cetera. And what I can also see is all of the previous waves that I've done, which is where I'm going to jump to now, just to show you the results very quickly. Okay. Now, the uh, results will be available only to the person who initiated this survey. So in this case, they're available to me. They'll show me quickly what my strengths are, what my development areas are, my hidden strengths and my blind spots. Hidden strengths are things that um, I, um, uh, I didn't think I was good at, but my uh, team or my manager or somebody else does. Uh, whereas a blind spot is the opposite. I think I'm great at it, um, but other people don't. Um, and so this very quickly identifies those by showing you a quick little icon here. Um, I can actually uh, filter this by the uh, rater group uh, to see the comparison. And I can dive into the different areas. I can see that support and development uh, is not as high as I would have hoped. So I can dive into this area. I can see uh, particular questions. And I can see here, the one where I have the biggest gap is this, I take the time to learn about people's career aspirations. I hover over here. I can immediately see the value of a 360 over just sending out a survey to the team. Sending out a survey to the whole company was great. It took about two minutes to set up and everyone responded. But what this is now showing me, because this is a 360, uh, is it's showing me that actually I think I'm not very good at this, but my manager thinks I'm awesome and my team don't think I'm good at all. And so if if I was just talking to my boss and saying, you know, I don't think I'm very good at learning about people's career aspirations or, you know, or, or sort of supporting their development. And my manager might say, well, I think you're amazing. You know, I've seen you do this so many times, you know, you're very good at it. Actually, if I ask my team, who are the people who really matter in this situation, you know, they, they definitely don't think I'm very good at this. There's a few responses in the twos and threes there in, in our five point scale. And so uh, I can quickly hit action. I want to do something about this. It, this is going to extract a, um, uh, a recommendation from our question set and our model um, that will then be assigned to me and I can collaborate with people, I can collaborate with my boss, I can collaborate with um, the, uh, the, the team itself. So I can say, hey guys, you know, I've noticed that I'm not very good at this. This is the recommendation that the system has, uh, has pulled out for me and um, I'd like to go through with you. This also has um, access to all of the um, open text comments as well. So you can see uh, what people think. And there are uh, four open text questions, start, continue and stop or stop, start, continue. Uh, and there's an other question for people to generally comment. And I can um, I can actually uh, filter this by uh, my team. I can see exactly what my team uh, think. And again, if I think there's a quite a pertinent comment here, uh, there we go. I think we need clear development plans, so much energy, but sometimes it needs a more serious tone. Okay, so hit action. And uh, again, I can just add this to my action board and start collaborating with my team on this topic. Okay, so going back through that, uh, we uh, are launching today. Uh, please do try this out, this Leading in Uncertain Times um, uh, experience app inside QB. Very, very simple, very quick. You can send it out to your whole company and see how well you are doing. Um, and uh, what you'll also see in there is benchmarks against other companies that are running this. So you'll see a sort of global average and see if you're below or above. Um, and you can dive into your Leadership 360 from within QB as well. Uh, so please do that. So I'm going to go back into the presentation. And at this point, I'm going to um, hand over to um, uh, to Kate. I think we have one more quick poll to run, correct? Yes, we do. I think you've got the poll, Luke, haven't you? But I guess I do, what we I wanted. To, yes, great. I guess what we wanted to do was, you know, Luke and I have been really busy creating content for for the QB guide to really provide as much support to organisations during this time. As we possibly can and with that in mind we have a final question that we'd really love to understand what your key priorities are at the moment exactly so i'm just going to launch this uh, poll to you now um so the the final final quick poll of the day uh, and this is what's your biggest challenge right now is it uh, cultural transformation and change management diversity and inclusion employee well-being being sorry leadership development or talent attraction and retention and there are lots of different options we could have had in here and we wanted to focus on what we felt were you know very interestingly the top five but it would be good to know exactly what yours are kate i mean you know me by now what am i going to ask you mm -hmm. <laughs> where do you think what do you think is going to come out on top yeah 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're probably all pretty important. I would say I would go for employee well-being. Yeah. Yeah, that's my answer. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to say I can see the results. I think that's a good call. Um, it, would be, it would be good to, to <laughs> maybe we need to do this differently where I can't see the results as this is going through but I think I'm the only one who can see the results right now um, I'm yes so I'm gonna I'm gonna close it now we've had a good uh, number of responses and we want to and uh, just um, quickly tell you um, um, the, the final bit of the of the webinar there um, but if I uh, just close you are 100% right 64% of people have said right. that Employee well-being mm -hmm. is the top answer. I'm, you know, it's interesting that there's the talent attraction and uh, retention one in there, and I'm I'm assuming that a lot of people might be selecting that for the for the retention part of it um, at the moment. And whilst yeah. we're in these turbulent times, we all know there's a lot going on. A lot of organisations having to furlough people, which is very sad, and making sure that you can actually retain your top performers and 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 keep things going is is going to be a key thing. But by all means, just pop a comment or a question in there if you want to elaborate on your thoughts of you know what are the what are the things that are really challenging at the moment. Okie dokie. Right. Um, so we said we were going to stick to thirty minutes. We have pretty much stuck to thirty minutes. We've handled a couple of questions along the way, but um, I just wanted to we just wanted to give you just a quick insight into the two calls to actions for you. Um, you have um, complete access to lead, leading in uncertain times as a survey inside QB.app. Um, QB remains free during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And like I said, uh, you being good company, the, the um, signups for that have been uh, well beyond what we ever expected. Um, and you have full access to Leadership 360. There is a free 30 day trial, so you can try that out um, and obviously talk to us if you want to know more. Uh, Kate, any final comments? Uh, um, yeah, if you could just show the last slide so that it's just clear how to get to it. We are going to share the slides and the recording with everybody, um, but perhaps you could just put the contact details up so that people know how to access QB. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, exactly. I thought I was, and I'm just failing today. So here we go. Here are the two links I was just talking about. So QB.app and uh, the 360 feedback um, tool, Leadership 360, which is also uh, free for 30 days as a trial. Um, and um, if you want to talk to us, please do. So Luke.tolbert at questback.com and uh, the fabulous Kate.pritchard at questback.com. Okay. Right, uh, well, if that's it, it's half an hour. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, and uh, I, we really hope you're staying safe and well and active. And uh, and uh, thank you very much. And thank you very much, Kate, for- um, oh, Thank uh, you. Uh, the Thanks everyone for joining. I hope it was useful. Thank you. Bye-bye.